please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. But Karnataka power battle has clearly intensified as the state would be witnessing the flow test which will be conducted at 4 p.m. today. But before that, the Supreme Court will be hearing a petition that has been filed by the Congress JDS combined at 10.30 a.m. against the appointment of K.G. Bopaya as the pro tem speaker. Congress has alleged that the governor willfully broke convention of appointing the senior most MLA as the pro tem speaker, who in this case should have been R.V. Deshpande. But Governor Wala instead chose Bopaya to conduct the flow test. On paper, the Congress JDS alliance clearly clearly has the numbers, but allegations of horse trading and bribing continue to fly thick and fast between both parties. Yadurappa, whose request for time till Monday for the trust vote was rejected by the Supreme Court. मतलब क्या लोग माध्यम में ला रहे थे वो ठाक कर रहे थे आ रहे थे यार वो कोड़ा होगा दिला मतलब बीजेपी और एस्टे हमेशा अधिकार दामेशा हन्ना दामेशा वोट कोड़ा अल्ले अधिकार कागले हन्ना कागले यार वो कोड़ा जेडीएस लागले कांग्रेस लागले यार वो कोड़ा आ रहे थे शास्त्र यार या ना वो पढ़ा दिया औरो पक्षदा कार्य पक्षदा सदस्य रहते हैं ना व्याक पढ़ बैको तो बीजेपी औरो औरो मार्गवंता ही दो टू तो यार दस और डेंटल गेम नेम क्या है बीजेपी औरो तो गणिहाना इतना हत्यौल जन बीजेपी कांग्रेस शासक रहना ना राजनाम की यूरियने नो नाटका मार्ग दो मार्ग भारत दला � गनी वाला लाइट बुट जा रहा था पाँच ने ये दूध डला इतना ला चला वो ने ये ला बंद बुट जाए गनी दूध मट्टा रहा नूर कोटी नूरे वोट कोटी ये ली यूरो नानो चुनाव ने समय से लेट आई थे यूरो बीजेपी और का अधिकार है लूटी कर रही है आवकाश कोटेंगा आगे तें ता इन्होंने ये ली नूर जिलो विश्वास है मतलब ना कि देख गिल टीवी ना हम करें ना मारे मारते हैं दिन ने कुछ एडिट अपनों रेड तो विधान सुधी का उन दो चिक्कू मोगो के उन दही दार वर्षी and B.S. Yadurappa will be facing that test at 4 p.m. tomorrow. And earlier today, he just spoke out and he said that he's fairly confident of passing that Agni Pariksha. He also said that tomorrow he will be making a number of announcements for the interests of the farmers. Today, I am going to get absolute majority. There is no doubt about it. According to Supreme Court direction, 4 o'clock, I am going to prove my majority. As soon as I prove the majority, tomorrow in uh, emergency cabinet meeting, I am going to way off loan up to 1 lakh cooperative loans and 1 lakh nationalized banks crop loans and 1 lakh NACAR loans and also old age pension, widow pension from 600 to 1200 and also irrigation purpose, very important, 1 lakh crores should be provided for that commitment is there. In the interest of the farmer, I am going to take that decision also tomorrow. So I request all the people of Karnataka, supporters, be calm. After 5 o'clock, you celebrate and uh, everything will be was all right. Thank you. So what is giving this man so much of confidence so that he is saying and telling his supporters, be calm at 5 p.m.? Perhaps after that, you can begin all the celebrations. Here is what BJP sources are telling us, that this is because they are appealing to the vote of conscience of the MLAs, which would essentially mean a mix of abstentions and cross-voting. Here's four likely strategy that the BJP is going to employ to ensure that they win the majority at 
the crucial flow test. Scenario one is follow the Maharashtra model where the BJP had won via voice vote in 2014. Remember, despite being short of 22 MLAs, and the halfway mark was 144. Scenario two, ensure the effective strength of this house comes down to 207. The current strength of the house is 222. Remember, elections on two seats was countermanded. And that would mean that the BJP has to ensure that 13 opposition MLAs, in fact, abstain from voting. Then the effective strength of the house will come down to 207. Scenario three is take a leaf from 2008 nuclear deal trust vote. What had happened then? Three Lok Sabha MPs were present in the parliament, but they did not press the button, which would mean that JDS Congress MLAs may well be present inside the Vidhan Sauda, but they will not participate in voting, which could take place if the speaker indeed wants it after the voice vote. So there should be division that will be taking place. Similarly, Section, a part of the 116 opposition MLAs may be told to be present but not press button. So scenario four is, which is highly unlikely, as you can see, B.S. Yadurappa is fairly confident that he will be passing that Agni Pariksha. B.S. Yadurappa perhaps does a watch by, gives a speech as it is part of tradition before trust vote, and then he resigns before the trust vote itself. Let me bring in my reporters now. Stacy is joining us live from outside Shangri-La Hotel. Purnima is outside Vidhan Sauda. And Akash is from Hilton Hotel, where all uh, the reporter, in fact, all the uh, MLAs of the Congress party is. And my colleague, uh, Pallavi Ghosh, is joining us live from uh, Delhi. Uh, Pallavi, let me come to you. Uh, you heard what B.S. Yadurappa had to say. He sounded fairly confident. The Congress is also fairly confident that the entire flock is together. But let's not forget what the allegations was yesterday that Anand Singh, one of the Congress MLAs, has been abducted. And we had also heard from um, H.D. Kumaraswamy, who had said that one of his MLAs has also been perhaps, uh, you know, hijacked, as he said. That was the word that was used by him, hijacked by the BJP. Yeah, but, but you know, Amara, what the Congress and the JDS is looking at is at 10.30, what they are hoping against hope is <coughs> that like yesterday, even today, the Supreme Court does give them a favorable judgment. Uh, the main problem is now with the pro tem speaker. The pro tem speaker is normally just someone who would have overseen it uh, and just uh, uh, sworn in all the new MLAs, but he's been armed with certain amount of power coming in from the Supreme Court. So he's going to look after the trust vote. He also has a power to kind of disqualify. Uh, he's also got a track record, according to the Congress, of being favorably inclined to Yadurappa, and that's what the Congress is worried about. In fact, what the Congress did a full-fledged press conference yesterday to come out with documents to prove that how Bopana had actually uh, violated all rules and uh, procedures to to help out the Yadurappa at that point of time to help him win the trust vote. So at 10.30 is when the Supreme Court is going to be hearing that petition of the Congress and the JDA that the pro tem speaker should actually be changed. The senior most MLA, uh, that's Arvi Deshpande, should have been made the pro tem speaker. So the Congress is certainly hoping that this favorable judgment will come for them just ahead of the trust vote. Now if it doesn't come, then certainly the worry also mounts for the Congress party. So far, they've been able to keep most of their MLAs together. But the worry is, as we were pointing out, what happens inside the house, a Gulam Nabi Azad or Ashok Gelod cannot reach out to those MLAs uh, inside the house. So they're going to be pretty much left to themselves. Uh, there have been wild allegations from both the sides. Uh, and at the end of the day, if they don't press the button for JDS Congress, then of course, all is going to be lost for the Congress party. All right, uh, Pallavi, in fact, let me tell you and the viewers what exactly is the Congress prayer. And I'll ask my producer to put out those graphics on the nature of the Congress petition that has been filed. This is a joint petition of the Congress JDS. What they are demanding is that this oath that has happened of the pro tem speaker in the form of Mr. K.G. Bopaya, this appointment must be set aside. And Mr. R.V. Deshpande, who is the senior most MLA, he should be taking charge as the pro tem speaker as part of the tradition as has been followed in assemblies across the country. The third prayer of the Congress party is that there should be physical segregation 
of the MLAs of both the sides, that is the Congress JDS in one lobby and the BJP in another lobby. This is to ensure that there is no cross-voting. That's what the Congress JDS petition says. And the fourth point is that they want this issue, that this entire flow test should be conducted under uh, supervision, of course, of the Supreme Court, and it should be videographed. Let me go across to uh, Stacy and Purnima now. Purnima, first to you. Uh, have the MLAs started arriving at the Vidhan Sauda, and what kind of security arrangement is in place? Uh, well, Maria, uh, MLAs are, uh, uh, have not yet arrived here. A crucial meeting is underway uh, where Yadurapa uh, is, uh, is holding discussions with his MLAs. But outside the Vidhan Sauda, heavy police deployment, uh, uh, there are uh, dire uh, di uh, directions to ensure, uh, to, uh, to, to convey to people of Tamil Nadu saying that there will be parking and uh, traffic issues here in and around Vidhan Sauda. So uh, heavy police uh, security checks ahead of uh, the, the much-awaited trust vote to ensure that no untoward incident takes place. However, MLAs, uh, since uh, 11 o'clock uh, is when uh, the assembly session will be convened, MLAs uh, could well uh, come here around uh, post 10.30 a.m. Maria. All right, let me bring in um, Akash now. Akash, what are you picking up from where you are? When, when will the MLAs be leaving? In fact, we will be going to Akash in just a bit. Let me go across to say Stacey, who's also joining us live uh, from Bengaluru, and she is um, at Shangri-La Hotel. Uh, what are you picking up, uh, Stacey? When will the MLAs be actually leaving the Shangri-La Hotel? Because that's where I believe all the MLAs are of the JDS and the Congress. Maria, here at Shangri-La is the BJP team, the whole camp here. Yadirappa just spoke uh, uh, to the media and post which he's come here to uh, Shangri-La, where from last night perhaps there are a couple of MLAs who have come from different districts who have been staying here, whereas the others uh, from around the area are entering now. So we, are, we are given to understand that there is a legislative party meeting that will uh, take place inside Shangri-La with uh, Yadirappa already inside. That, ma uh, that meeting perhaps is already underway. And post which uh, after that they will uh, head towards Vidhan Sauda. So this meeting is for the BJP members, to, you know, fi the final call on what their strategy is once they uh, get into Vidhan Sauda. They will uh, take their oath and then uh, later in the evening at 4 o'clock only will the floor te test happen. So till then they are right now at Shangri-La probably discussing all the nuances of how things will go ahead or even keeping a keen eye on that 10.30 verdict that is supposed to come from Supreme Court because that really is the cliffhanger. Whether, you know, if it doesn't go in favor of the BJP, then everything changes. There will, there, the pro tem speaker right now, KJ Bopaya, is uh, a loyal BJP uh, man. He has been the speaker before for the BJP as well. So they would definitely want him to continue, him to uh, swear, give, take, let them take the uh, oath ceremony and post which he will... Uh, really have in his hands how to conduct this floor test as well. So they will definitely keep a really keen eye on that 1030 verdict from the Supreme Court post which they will all gather together and their uh, bu buses from here will leave with BJP MLAs towards, will leave with BJP MLAs towards the uh, Vidhan Sauda. Absolutely. What happens at 10.30 a.m.? That's the reason why I'm saying in many ways will decide the fate of B.S. Yadurappa at 4 p.m. Because here is the man, K.G. Bupaya, who had saved B.S. Yadurappa in 2010. Let's not forget what he had done was that uh, 11 BJP MLAs, interestingly, had rebelled against the BSY government and had made it difficult for him to win the trust vote in a very, very controversial move, KG Bopaya had then disqualified 11 rebel BJP MLAs and five independents as well, which had brought the effective strength of the House down to 208, ensuring that B.S. Yadurappa would sail through this trust vote. Let me bring in my guests now in this special broadcast. Jasmeet Singh is a lawyer of the Supreme Court. Radhika Ramaseshan is consulting editor of Business Standard here in the studio. Dr. H.S. Shiv Prakash is a political analyst. Vaibhav Agarwal is the spokesperson of the BJP and Sarita Lathflang is the spokesperson of the Congress. Vaibhav Agarwal, first to you. You're a lawyer yourself, Vaibhav. So who all will be appearing on behalf of the BJP and the Karnataka government at 10.30 a.m.? 
So I, I won't get into the technical part of it, but uh, we have a very decorated panel, a very senior panel. We have, uh, of course, the Union of, it's the case against Union of India and others. So of course, we have KK Venugopal, we have Mukul Rothgi, we have uh, Mukulji's son coming in, we have Nalan Kohli present, we have, uh, th there's a whole battery of us, I think about 20 of them. So hmm. it's difficult to remember the name, but I can read them out if you want. No, 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 I'm <laughs> saying so, it's a, you are really looking at the 10.30 a.m. judgment are, because it's are, a vacation court. We are absolutely taking it very, very seriously. And I'll tell you why. It is not about the prestige of Bhartiya Janta Party. It is about the prestige of the country. And we're taking it seriously because it is a matter related to the people of the country, which, is, which needs to be dealt with the highest of care. And it is only for the people, by the people, with the people. That is where we're coming from. Hmm. There, there is no personal prestige involved here. Of course, it's a matter of prestige. That's the for reason. For the country, and that I is mean, why no, we no, no. The fact the is that this is a principle. matter of prestige for Absolutely. the BJP, Radhika, isn't it? Nakki it's a Nakki ladai. ladai. Nakki ladai. No, just as uh, saving Atalji's government hmm. was, uh, after that 13-day uh, fiasco was also a Nakki ladai, and the, the BJP has been put through several protests in uh, the recent past. I remember. I mean, you know, in UP. Rajasthan, Gujarat, I mean, you know, when they were, f uh, when they first came to power and each time the BJP did manage to have its way. So despite all the imponderables, whether Mr. Bhopaya remains as a pro tem speaker or not, who, whether they appeal to conscience vote or not, I do foresee a situation where there's going to be enormous pandemonium in the assembly because that what, that's what happens in these uh, hmm. high voltage kind of situations. And it's, I mean, whether it involves a BJP or another party, your trust vote has become such an intense battle, almost as though you're fighting another election, you know. It's just one, I mean, I admire the energies that these uh, uh, political yes. parties have because they've just been through a very difficult election which didn't even yield a conclusive verdict and now you are put through to the, uh, another trial of strength. So both sides are geared up and I mean you might just see a lot of uh, pandemonium because which suits the BJP hmm. because then the regardless of who the pro tem speaker is he might disqualify some of the trouble uh, alleged troublemakers bring down the strength of the house I mean you have all kinds of possibilities. But let's not forget that KG Bopaya had come to the rescue of B.S. Yadurappa in 2010 so we have seen that trust that B.S. Yadurappa perhaps has in him and he has delivered to that. But you know Radhika what you were talking about, BJP invariably over the last few years has had this track record of winning through these very, very difficult situations. Yeah. And that's why this vote of conscience I, as I picked up after speaking to a BJP leader and he said this would be a vote of conscience because they understand that Lingayat constituency sure. could emerge again in favor of B.S. Yadurappa, so there is a special reach out to the Lingayat MLAs. Absolutely, but that's a bit dicey. Despite being Lingayats, they chose to fight on a Congress ticket, hmm. knowing fully well that the Lingayats were going against the Congress. There was no doubt about it. It was crystal clear that Sida Ramaya's ploy had come uh, a cropper. It had unraveled. So uh, what makes the BJP think that in today's circumstances, just appealing to the Lingayat uh, sentiment will bring them back to the BJP, I mean, I, uh, it doesn't look like a very foolproof uh, strategy to me, but nonetheless, it's a strategy. And sure, I mean, they are going to uh, sort of, uh, um, uh, they're going to employ every trick of the trade, and this is certainly one of them. Hmm. Of course, there are uh, JDS MLAs who are supposed to be distinctly uncomfortable with this alliance with the Congress. I mean, we've seen how uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi sort of spared no words to run down uh, Deva Gowda and Absolutely. Kumaraswamy, hmm. you know, which okay. is... Uh, Dr. Shiv Prakash, would you say that this one of the prayers in the petition that has been filed by the Congress JDS is that there has to be physical segregation of the MLAs? Has it happened in the past? Uh, not to the best of my knowledge. I don't think there's been physical segregation. But in the past, there have been many pandemoniums in Karnataka Assembly. For example, when Ed Europa was uh, during his tenure, at some point of time, there was no confidence motion against him. And I remember even uh, sandals were exchanged in the assembly hall. And I won't be surprised if a similar thing happens today. Hmm. Uh, I, so I think this physical segregation is not a bad idea to avoid such unpleasant things.
let's see whether Supreme Court actually agrees to um, something of that nature. Just meet Singh, you know, one, one of the points that have been mentioned in this petition again is that KG Bupaya has had a checkered past because uh, when he actually went ahead and disqualified these MLAs, uh, these MLAs, of course, moved the apex court and his decision was quashed. Do you think when the Supreme Court actually decides on his fate at 10.30 a.m., that will be one factor that will be playing on the mind of the judges? Uh, see, the point is very simple. Insofar as the appointment of pro tem speaker is concerned, there is no law as such. Absolutely. There is no rule as such. Hmm. So, Supreme Court probably create a precedent or Supreme Court may say, since there is no law, we are not watching it. Probably you can video record it. If there is a bias which you allege, if you can prove that bias through that video recording, we'll look into the matter maybe on Monday, Tuesday, after the floor. No, test. but going by but that logic. But far as the appointment is concerned, probably Supreme Court may or may not interfere. No, but, but the question is, of course, that all decisions of the governor come under the ambit of discretion. Yes. It's, so it's based on precedents and conventions. Yes. So when the Apex Court decided to reduce the duration that has been given to uh, B.S. Yadurapa from 15 days to one day, that was asked to prove it, his majority in 24 hours, that in itself was a complete departure from, uh, from the practice. I mean, it, it really actually, in many ways, uh, ensured that the decision of a governor is a subject of judicial review. I mean, I, I won't call it as a departure or, you know, uh, uh, the governor decision was, you know, uh, there was there was a question mark by the Supreme Court on the governor. Probably they went into the practicality of it. They said for 15 days, if there is a cloud of uncertainty and if, if there is horse trading possibilities or anything of that sort, let's have it tomorrow. What's the difficulty of having it tomorrow? They did not lay down a law. It does not mean that tomorrow if in MP or Rajasthan there is there is a need of flow test, it has to happen in 24 hours. There is no law as such. Absolutely. You know, even in the absence of law, that's the reason why we are seeing so, so much of uh, ambiguity around it. Today, I don't see Supreme Court interfering with the with the. Okay, let's not second guess. Let's not second guess uh, <laughs> the decision of the Supreme Court. Let me bring in Sarita here. Uh, 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 is the entire flock together? Uh, what happened to Anand Singh? He had gone missing, and then H.D. Kumara Swami also said that two of his MLAs Everybody have been intact. hijacked. The entire family is intact. So you're fairly sure that 116 is your number? Yes, we're just waiting for the 4 o'clock uh, floor test. Okay. So, Vaibhav Agarwal, if I were to come back to you, so 10.30 a.m. is the first test of B.S. Yadurapa. I should say the second test because uh, first test, he'd re he passed in a way, but yet not with flying colors. His, he remains the chief minister, but then, you know, the duration has been reduced by the apex court. Again, the court will be deciding on pro tem speaker. You know, it looks like that the BJP is out there to break every convention. If, uh, we, if there was somebody like Mr. Uh, Deshpande, who was the senior most um, MLA, then why didn't the BJP go ahead with his choice rather than going with somebody who is Mr. Bopaya, who has a very, very controversial history? <clears throat> it's a tough one. Uh, but let's look at it. Let's look at it. A few points that perhaps the way I, I see it is <clears throat> that, okay, KG Bopaya must have acted in a, in a particular manner in, in, uh, in his previous stint as a pro tem speaker or as a speaker. Maybe favoring, I won't call that favoring, maybe that was call of the situation at that time. Um, and, and took some actions, took some calls, and then he was found uh, to be, to be uh, guilty of certain charges that were brought against him and all that stuff. But, you know, going by that logic, um, 2011 it was Hansrat Bhardwaj's rule in Karnataka. 2011 it was UPA 2, and going by that logic because um, UPA keeps coming back and saying that uh, Modi government controls the judiciary. How would it feel, just for the sake of discussion point, if we were to come back and say that the charges brought against him at that time were absolutely politically motivated and uh, judiciary being influenced at that time? You know, we never got to discuss that. Uh, we also have to understand that while while uh, the Congress and JDA, JDS uh, alliance that is harping on the numbers on a letter that was produced by uh, uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi during the course of the hearing in the court, 
did not contain signatures at all. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at the copy. They only contained a list of names which you and I can sit here and make right now. Yeah, so in the Doesn't absence mean, of and 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 you know, let me let me let me bring this forth to the to the very uh, enlightened panel and to yourself as well. You've covered Congress and BJP for a very long time. There are a hundred and seventeen so-called 117 MLAs parked in my hotel today. I am the hotel owner. What hmm. if I was to call and the governor and stake a claim there, hey, make no, me no, the no, chief that's minister. That's a WhatsApp message. I mean, let's you know, I mean, this let, is a WhatsApp message. No, 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 that, that's very but flippant. Yeah, let's be practical let's, and let's, pragmatic about it. Let's not be flippant it. here. Let's you not know? be no, flippant no, here. Weber, so, Weber. So what okay, let me, let me bring in Utkarsh who sure. has a great deal of sure. knowledge he's about... At the he's uh, still at the court? Yeah, he is at Utkarsh the Supreme Court, in fact. Okay, Utkarsh Anand is joining us live from the Supreme Court and Akash is joining us from Hilton Hotel in Bengaluru where Congress JDS MLAs are. Utkarsh, if I were to come to you, uh, at 10.30 a.m. is the first round of this battle between the Congress and uh, the BJP that will be playing out in the Supreme Court. And, you know, the, if we look at the nature of petition, Utkarsh, I think the one point which is, again, very important is about the physical segregation uh, of uh, the... MLAs in two different lobbies. Do you think it has happened in the past and uh, will the Supreme Court be or actually uh, passing an order to such an effect? In fact, Maria, this is a very pertinent question. I'll tell you, not long back in May 2016, when Uttarakhand uh, was under this uh, under this flux, wherein uh, there was a presidential proclamation, Harish Rawat government had been thrown out uh, by way of issuing the presidential proclamation. The matter had reached the Supreme Court. Uh, in May 2016 itself, Supreme Court passed string of directions about the mode of voting, how the vote would be computed, who will be calculating the votes, where should the members sit, who will ensure safety of the members, who should vote, who should not vote. We have a president. There were almost uh, a dozen directions issued by the Supreme Court hmm. in that case. Now, you asked the question about uh, the physical segregation. Yes, that was also addressed by the Supreme Court. Uh, the, he, the Justice Deepak Mishra, who was then not the Chief Justice of India, he was hearing this matter. He had ordered for the physical segregation. The order stated very clearly that people who want to vote in favor of the motion, they will sit in one side of the house. The other side who does not want to uh, support that motion will sit on the other side. 